as you can see from the home page of my creative cloud account i have different updates for my apps including photoshop which has a, a latest version of 24.5 and if i scroll down here in the beta apps i can see that i also have another photoshop or it's called photoshop beta and it's version 24.6 and yes, this is what includes the generative film feature powered by Adobe AI Firefly. But instead of having an update or trial button or buy button, it says not compatible. In fact, at all the updates I can see here, they say not compatible. And if I click on one of them, BT in updates or in beta, I am told that I must update to Mac OS 11 or later. This table I restrict the versions and names of Mac OS from the one I have in this Mac to the latest version as of today. You can see all of them, they are here and um, if I check about this Mac, you see it is running Mac OS 10.14.6 or Mojave, that's the name. Obviously, it's not compatible to the latest Adobe apps and officially, according to Apple, this MacBook Pro 2012, the highest Mac OS can be upgraded to is Catalina, which is the version of 10.15, but still this can't resolve the issue of installing Adobe Photoshop 2023, which requires Mac OS 11 or later. So you, you might be wondering, Okay, what do we do now? All right, well, I'm going to force my MacBook Pro to run on latest version of Mac OS. I won't format my Mac or make a fresh install of Mac OS, so I won't lose anything in my computer. But it is always an advice to fast backup my data, your data, the important files before performing any OS related settings. Now, since I've finished to back up my data, let's install a bootloader software, which is basically a program that runs inside my Mac before Mac OS starts. There are so many bootloader programs out there, but the most trusted one is from the Rotania company, and the bootloader is called Open Core Legacy Patcher. Go to Dortania's Open Core Ligas Patcher official website. The direct link is in the video description below, but please allow me to demonstrate step by step how to reach there. Okay? So open any internet browser and Google Open Core Legacy. Uh, select the first link. Make sure it is a github.io or .com. And here, is the home page of Dortania's Open Core Ligas Patcher. Then click Getting Started and click here, run the Open Core Patcher.app. And click on Open Core Ligas Patcher Release, which will open a new window. And as today, when I'm recording this video, you can see that the latest version is 0.6.7. But I'm sure at the time you may be watching this video, it might be upgraded to another version, which is uh, more improved, I believe. So now scroll down and click on opencore-patcher.gui-app-zip and download the file to your Mac. In my case, you can see I'm saving it to the desktop. Now double click on the downloaded file wherever you saved it to unzip it and then double click on this open core dash patcher file. As usually because this is an app downloaded from the internet, this warning will pop up and of course click open and voila, you are on the home page of open core legacy patcher of the downloaded version as you can see it here. It is able to recognize the Mac you're using. In my case, you can see I am using uh, MacBook Pro 9.1.
So now let's download macOS installer by clicking here and select download macOS installer because I assume you don't have an existing one. If you do, then you can use this uh, option. Now the patcher will start and present the recent installers from Apple servers. By default, it will intend to select for you the latest version of macOS, but if you click on show all available installers, you can see all of them including the beta version, but don't, don't download the beta version. So for me, I want to install Monterey, which is version 12, and so I am going to select its latest update. Now the open core Ligas patcher starts to download the macOS 12 installer to my Mac. My friend, the time to finish the download normally depends on the speed of your internet and the performance of your Mac. As you can see for me, it seems it will take not less than 30 minutes and if I use speedtest.net to check my internet, this is the results I get right now about the speed of my home internet which is not bad compared to my location. It took me around 45 minutes to complete the entire process of download and extracting it and saving it to my Mac. So now here I can select no if I simply want to just keep it here on my Mac and maybe install it later as an existing installer. By the way, after the download has finished, if I go to applications, I can see it here. And always it will have a name of Mac OS installer you downloaded. So you can check if you have downloaded a different installer, you can check if you have it there. It's inside the applications. Before you select yes, first plug a USB drive or any other external disk storage to your Mac. Make sure it is at least 16 gigabyte as of me, I just plugged this internal disk using an adapter to use it as an external. I have purchased all of them on Amazon and the links are in the video description below. And uh, in my opinion, they are affordable and they are good. Now here on my desktop, you can see it here. I don't want to use it as backup, then I ignore it. Then I click yes, and the patcher will search for all the Mac OS installers that I have downloaded that, you know, I have on my computer. For me, I only have this Monterey version, but if you have downloaded more than one, then they will all be listed here for you to choose the one you want. So for me, uh, you know, all for you, select it, select the one you want, then the patcher will analyze your external disks connected to your Mac and they will all be listed here. And for me again, I only have this one, which is more than 500 gigabyte. And as you can see, I'm reminded that everything will be erased, will be deleted. So I select it, then I will be asked to put my Mac password and click OK. When this message of backup pops up again, I can click on decide later or not use. You can now see that my disk's name has changed from its initial name to this install macOS Monterey. Normally this doesn't take long on fast drives like mine, but if you have a poor USB drive, it may even take hours and hours to finish. If you want to use the one I'm using, you can use the links in the download in the video description below. They are from Amazon and they are very, very affordable. As now you can see, it has completed to create my bootable USB disk, macOS Monterey, and now I have to accept to install OpenCore bootable to this disk but I will later install it on my Mac's internal disk. I will explain this shortly. Just click yes, I will explain this later and click install to this disk and select the same external disk. Then click on this EFI selection and put again your Mac password and from here, I will have to reboot my Mac. Now click on reboot let it first turns off and as it restarts, 
press and hold option alt key on the keyboard until this apple boot menu appears basically what you see here is all the drives connected to this mac including internal and external drives or disks this one is the other external disk or usb i've just made bootable drive and you see it is named the version of my mac of the mac os monterey which i have used but in your case it might be another version now this one called crucial ssd is the one my mac is running on it's an internal disk for you it might has another name in most cases it is called macintosh hd hdd and this one is called efi boot and from the logo you can see it is from open core and it is the one we are going to set as a primary boot disk remember when i was creating it i said that i will explain it more so right now this efi boot is installed to my external disk and it is going to enable us to install this mac os monterey to this internal disk in this unsupported macbook pro 2012 I hope I've tried to make it simple for everyone to understand, I believe. Let me know in the comment section below if you have a question about that. So let's continue. Now select this EFI boot and click this upper arrow key to continue. Now select install macOS Monterey. By using this option we won't lose our installed apps and files but when you want to do a fresh install or format you will first go here to disk utility and select the internal disk then erase it and come back here please find a link in the video description below of a tutorial demonstrating how to do a fresh install of mac os any version all right now click continue and click again continue Click on agree and agree again to accept the license agreement. Then select a disk where you want to install the OS. In my case, I only have one internal disk, which is crucial SSD. So I select it and I click on continue. Now from here, you can sit down and take a short break because the Mac will automatically restart several times until the installation is completed. You don't have to do anything here because the installer remembers everything you did in the beginning so that it can continue to boot on them. Okay, it's done. Voila. All the users in this Mac are still here, are still available. I believe, you know, all the files are also still available inside the Mac. So I select mine and put the password and optimize everything as, as I want until I reach here to the desktop. If we check about this Mac, we can see that we now have a latest Mac OS on this unsupported Mac. As you can see it here. Oh guys, this is so beautiful. This is so good. All right? Now from here, there's an important thing you have to do. Because remember, this external disk, I will remove it soon from this Mac. The same as you, you won't keep them there forever i now have to install the other efi boot on the internal mac disk and set it as the primary boot disk otherwise this mac will not work unless if this external disk is always plugged to this mac so it's very important let's do it quickly open again open core patcher select build and install open core select install to this disk now select disk 0 now select this disk 0 s1 efi put again your password and click ok then click on reboot press and hold option alt key on the keyboard as the mac reboots until this menu displays now you can see that we have two open core efi boot items this one with orange color remember it is located on my external drive and this one with black color is on my internal disk so i'm going to select it so that my mac can now know that 
from now it is going to be the primary boot disk in other words this efi boot will always fake the mark that it is okay to jump on crucial ssd and run mac os monterey even though by default this mark is not supported by the monterey os so select it and click this icon and let it start until i see my username and here is the desktop again now i can eject the external disk and if i restart again the mac with holding option alt key on the keyboard i will now see this only if i boot and my internal drive and by the default you can see that this is the selected one okay so i click on it and continue and next time whenever i turn on my mac it will always boot through that open core efi boot and you don't always have to you know to press and hold option key on, on your keyboard just press on the power button on your computer on your mac and everything will be done automatically So now ladies and gentlemen, the waiting is over. It's now the time to install the latest Adobe apps on unsupported Mac, including Photoshop 24.6 AI generative fill. Open up again your Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. So as you can see it here, and then go to the updates. Now I can see that I can now click on update immediately as long as my subscription is active. And if I go into beta apps, I can also immediately click on install and I start enjoying generative feel as long as my subscription is active. And if it's a new account, you have try and buy buttons. Normally Adobe gives you between 7 to 14 days of trial it depends on the on the package you selected according to adobe in order for you to use generative fill you need to download photoshop beta from your creative cloud account and of course you have to have an active subscription of photoshop and uh, of course your mac has to be running on a latest version of mac os at least version 11 and that is Big Sur or the later versions which include Monterey, Ventura or Sonoma and many more which are always every year coming. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video from the beginning to the end. I know it is a long video. Let me know your feedback in the comment section below and don't forget to give it a like if you really found it helpful and please consider to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate about that. Thank you again. God bless you. Bye-bye.